Hey everyone, it's JC here with the Copley Consulting Group, and today I'm going to walk through our updated ClickSense application tracking COVID-19 both across the United States and globally. We have a lot of new changes that we're proud to announce along with some Copley resources as well as understanding these visualizations. So let's get started. First, I want to point out that we're in an HTML web page and this ClickSense application is embedded and sitting directly on top of that, allowing this to be accessible for the public and anyone can hit this website anytime, any place on any mobile device. Second, I want to point out that depending on the device you're hitting this URL on, you may have some constraints based on these KPIs and charts. So if you are hitting the website and your graphics start to look very constrained and tight, like this, you may want to come to your zoom and adjust it down to around 100 or whatever feels appropriate based on your, your electronic device. So jumping into the application, I want to point out a few things before I actually start talking about the analytics at play here and the data that we're using. First, I want to point out that you should always read the headers and the subtitles of the graphics and visualizations. They'll put the data into perspective and help you understand what we're trying to show you along with what the data is actually representing. This will avoid a lot of confusion and help a lot of people in the long run. And just like last time, you'll notice that this entire dashboard is responsive. So if I want to see the top uh, X amount of countries here, I can see them just by selecting them. If I want to see since the month of March, I'm now just looking at March data. And as I drill into this information, I can slice and dice it as I choose. And just to point out some mapping features that we have here, um, you know, once you're in the map, you can actually click on this. You can click on our lasso tool and you can select states here, uh, say for the Northeast and click either enter on your keyboard or this green checkbox here in the top right corner. And we're now looking at all the states that we had in our selection. To drill past this and go to the county layer, what we can do is select any county or use another tool and click enter. And we are now seeing all of the counties with along with their caseloads. St. Lawrence has 12 confirmed counties in New York. So something good to know there. One thing I want to point out here is this selection bar across the top. It keeps a trail of breadcrumbs as you navigate through the application, allowing you to change this at any point in time. Should I want to back out of New York, I'm now looking at the entire United States. Well, if I want to go back to my spot, I can just hit the back button and it simply jumps right back to where I was so I didn't lose my place in the analysis. You can also clear them all at the same time by clicking clear all selections and this will reset everything to a blank canvas. By doing that, I want to jump into the next sheet and talk about comparative analysis between states and countries. So what we can do here is we can compare the United States, for example, and see our KPIs on the left hand side and our line chart showing our curve, uh, typically referred to as, you know, flattening the curve is the, the key term right now, what we're trying to do with social distancing as we kind of work through the epidemiology of this. And on the bottom, we can focus on another country, maybe like China, who has actually been very successful at flattening the curve and releasing their numbers in this way. So we can see we have about double the cases that China has had, but we also have about half the death rate that China has had as well. Moving on to the next sheet here, what we can see is air quality data. And what's new about this is we've added a total of five states, looking at Massachusetts, New York, California, Texas, and Florida. So what we can do is look at states like California, who have actually started implementing social distancing, stay in place orders much sooner than other states in the United States. And we can see this has had a significant effect on their drop and particulate matter concentration. We can select another state uh, like maybe New York and see what their curve looks like. Again, very similar here. There is a drop off. We have a lot less industrialization. We have a lot less transportation and we have a lot less human impact on the environment. Now, looking at a state like Florida, who has been one of the last states to implement these social bans, they still have airports open. They still have beaches open. Very active state here in the south. And we can see this line has remained virtually the same and is actually kind of trending back up as of late. Very interesting there how we're comparing and using this data to track COVID-19 as it's in these states in different populations. This next sheet here is not new, but it is new data. And along the top here, we see our Dow Jones variants from the open and close of our daily candlestick movement. Along on the bottom, we can see this actual line chart 
of the Dow Jones showing us changes over time. You'll notice the last two days are missing. That's because the last two days were Saturday and Sunday and the market is not open on the weekend. So we should see closing data here. Uh, looks like the market just closed. So we'll have some data by the time you get on here and check this out. Again, by paying attention to the subtitles here, we can actually see, I can click on the alternative measure to see the VIX, the volatility index. Um, again, very important to point that out because that's something you may have missed if you're not reading all the footnotes and headers as they appear. So this is the volatility index showing you over time how much volatility you've had along with the cases here globally of COVID-19. Something to keep in mind. Moving forward in the application, this is one of the newest data sources we've added and it's data directly from the World Health Organization. You'll notice we put this button here going directly to the WHO website and normally you'd have to come here, you would have to click on situation reports and scroll through about 70 different PDFs to find information related to that day. So what we've done is we've taken all the legwork out of that for you and we've hyperlinked them all directly in with the Web Connector tool from ClickSense. So all of these links correspond to a day that's released from the WHO and it corresponds here with this chart on the right. So as I make selections and drill into maybe a specific time frame, you'll notice that my table here on the left gets reduced to the range I'm looking at. And if I want to look at 328, I can then just click on this link for 328 and it opens the PDF directly released from the WHO uh, health organization. And I can read more about this day and I can see that this is in fact March 28, 2020. Now last year we have here is relatively new data and it's jobless claims reported by the Department of Labor Bureau of Statistics. This is a really new measure and it actually shows over 3 million cases of jobless claims as of last week. This is over a 10 times jump from the average of 200,000 in the United States and this is a significant number directly correlated to COVID-19. And you'll notice they, these reports are released weekly, so we should have another one being released any day now. And as we keep on the lookout for that, this will reflect those changes. But it's really important to see how we have this direct correlation between an increase in jobless claims and an increase in cases of coronavirus and the pandemic and the pandemonium surrounding this event. And you can see as you just narrow into the last two weeks of this, very significant jumps here. 156,000 confirmed cases and we have relatively average jobless claims and to a severe jump of 304,000 cases and over 3 million claims. Currently this number you can see here when I clear this is at 720,000 claims. So expecting this next jobless claims report, we're expecting it to be very high and we'll have that updated here shortly, hopefully by the time you're accessing the website and watching this video. So that is it, everyone. I really want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this video. Copley thanks you. And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, concerns about the data, helping understand, helping get access. Whatever we can do to be of assistance this time, please let us know and reach out. We're always here to help. Thanks.